Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. I am Aaron Wigwam, and today we're going to take a look at a preview of a game. A demo. It's a whole video about a demo. It's no secret that the indie game market loves one specific genre more than all others. We see it all the time on Steam Greenlight, on Kickstarters, covered by thousands of YouTubers. I am, of course, talking about Five Nights at Freddy's ripoff games, but second to that, and almost as popular, are Metroidvanias. We see tons and tons of Metroidvanias coming out all the time, and that's great, because Metroidvanias are a lot of fun, and we love them, and there's so many great examples of them, but it leaves me to beg the question, why do we not get nearly as many games inspired by what is probably the most prolific Super Nintendo game of all time, a link to the past. With its fairy tale like setting, varied dungeons, creative items, tons of amazing boss battles, and timeless action combat, we should be buried in Link to the Past inspired homages. But that is where today's game comes into play. Hazelnut Bastille by Aloft Studios is a game inspired by Link to the Past and Chrono Trigger and all of your SNE classics. Including Metroidvanias, they say, on their website. But, you know, it's mostly linked to the past. The pixel art looks like a modern day Chrono Trigger. No, like a, like a, like a good modern day Chrono Trigger. Oh, that made me sad. That made me real sad. Hazelnut Bastille first caught my attention on Twitter when I saw one of the GIFs and I instantly fell in love. I started searching through their Twitter, which brought me to their website, which instantly won me over. Their website features a selection of images showing off the impressive visuals, a quick rundown of the passionate team bringing us the game, and proof of their love of the classic 90s SNES days of gaming. Seeing all this, I had to sign up for their newsletter immediately and gain access to the demo which we'll be taking a look at today. Now, quick disclaimer though, Hazelnut Bastille is very much a game still in development. It just wants you to take it with a grain of salt that any criticisms I might make to the game are more just suggestions of things I'd like to see tweaked before the final release, but it's in no way an indication of what the final product is going to look like. So please keep that in mind as we as now go. Now we go to the demo. Let's do it. In the demo, you are dropped right into the action, starting off at the entrance of what I will assume is going to be the first dungeon. You notice the magnificent pixel artwork and a brilliant use of color, except for this water, which is pea yellow. I mean, I think it's supposed to be acid, but it definitely looks like pea. Maybe it's a pea treatment plant, I don't know. Anyways, you go off exploring into the dungeon, encountering enemies and obstacles along the way. You have a dagger slash sword to help you fight, some bombs, and a crossbow. Now, the sword has three levels of attack. Normal stab, a slightly slower swipe attack, and a badass full body spin. The spin and swipe takes stamina or magic or whatever they're gonna call it in this game, but it's this bar up here and it replenishes quickly over time. All of your items seem to use this stamina bar or have limited ammo for things such as bombs or crossbow bolts. You'll quickly learn that the dagger isn't necessarily your best option for combat by itself. The crossbow is just as effective at dealing damage, but it allows you to keep a safe distance that the short range dagger just cannot compete with. That is until you get this item in the dungeon that creates blocks. Its primary function is to conduct electricity and help you solve puzzles, but on the fly, you can make blocks which you use as cover, and then you fight enemies safely from behind it. And judging by their website, we can expect a lot more of these original and creative items to be waiting for us in the full release. The dungeon itself works much like you would expect. Some rooms must be cleared of enemies to progress, there are keys to find, puzzles to solve, both a mini boss and a full boss to fight, etc, etc, etc. The dungeon itself has a spectacular layout. I wouldn't be surprised if Aloft Studios had watched quite a few episodes of Mark Brown's Boss Key series detailing how dungeon progression should work. Check out that show by the way, cause it's, it's good stuff. 
You have enough room for exploration that you feel in control, but obviously you need to find the keys or items to progress which limits the dungeon enough that you don't feel lost. As you progress through the dungeon, you unlock doors or break down barriers that make navigation easier. You have your map to assist you as well which unlocks progressively from exploration. I guess that would be one of the Metroidvania elements that they were talking about. The dungeon works perfectly for me as proof that there is a clear understanding of game design and dungeon layout at work here. But let's move on to my wish list of things that I hope get tweaked or changed before the final release. There were certainly a few things in this demo that need work still. First of all, there are some sound adjustments that need to be made. Many of the sound effects that help indicate whether you solve a puzzle or kill an enemy or whatever it may be are too quiet and get drowned out by the music. <laughs> When you need to listen to these sound effects to understand what impact the puzzle solution had on the dungeon, this can be problematic. It'd be nice just to hear the main audio lower a little bit while these are playing so that they're more noticeable. Also the music is great, but it seems like we're missing some boss tracks still. I just assume those are coming later. Finally, the combat itself could use some changes. Your enemies have a small amount of knockback, but they recover from this so quickly that they're back in your face almost instantly. Add this with the fact that your own recovery from damage is a bit too quick, and your dagger's range is so limited, it feels like enemies just run over you at times. Like these crabs that take four hits or the bosses that cover one third of the playable area. Luckily there is a lot of health to help balance this out, but I cannot help but feel it would be more satisfying if enemies had a slight stun after their knockback, or if you had at least a little more invincibility, I mean just a pinch more, or if the blocks you laid down as cover just came out a little bit quicker, just something needs to be tweaked so that you feel a little less powerless. And speaking of damage, all of the beams in this dungeon deal damage to you, making it somewhat frustrating when you're trying to work out a solution to a puzzle and you die because you're getting hit too much. It would be nice if the beam would maybe just hit you with knockback and not deal damage. But honestly, even if none of these changes were implemented, I will still be checking out Hazelnut Bastille on day one of release. I am just that excited for it. Just looking through all the gifts on their website and their subreddit, there are so many items I want to get my hands on, so many dungeons I want to explore, so many NPCs I can't wait to talk to, and just the little bits of story I was able to pick up from the demo have already got me hooked. I need to know what's going on in this game. And we haven't even gotten to see the overworld yet, but it looks like coming out in March is another demo which may actually get to show us some towns, a little bit more of the game. So. If I've intrigued you on the game, now is a perfect time to sign up for the newsletter. You can gain access to this demo and the new demo when it comes out, hopefully this March. Go check it out, subscribe to their newsletter, and subscribe to me if you're new here. Uh, you know, there's that button down there, you can hit it and then you can like this video and I will be forever in your gratitude as well as if you enjoyed this, uh, just thank you for watching. I love your beautiful faces, uh, click another video and I'll just sit here and ramble for a while and then you hopefully leave me alone while clicking on another video and bothering me at some point in the past because that's how time works kind of I don't know I just ramble nonsense right now in hopes that you will desperately click another one of my videos okay bye bye